guys. Um, I'm Elisa with Average Advocate. I empower everyday normal people like parents and whoever else um, to make a difference in the world in their home, first of all, and then in their community, and then, you know, the globe. So today I want to tell you a little bit because today is the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, which essentially means it's a big day that everyone around the world says something about human trafficking, whereas um, normally it's just people that are, uh, you know, in the United States. There's a lot of days in the United States for human trafficking, but this is like the world one. So I was going to go over the 12 points that... Um, that are new in the newest Trafficking Against Persons report, which is this massive thing and it's super boring to read, so I don't even read it. And I look for summaries about it and, you know, I've, well, I've read through it before, but it's really boring. So anyways, I'm gonna tell you what trafficking looks like now, today, in 2019. So the first point is, is that they're saying now that trafficking, the amount of people who are being trafficked are about the amount of people that are in New York City, like the whole metro area. So if you've ever watched, you've got mail or some sort of, you know, movie that's in New York City or been to New York City. That's kind of like imagine that many people who are being exploited. So that's how many people, although there are, you know, reports of it being like up to 45 million. Um, so you can kind of give and take. Um, I have a blog post if people are interested in that. Um, so, but essentially there's a lot of people and like I just said in my last post, I don't really usually go with, you know, stats and numbers, but sometimes we need to hear the stats and numbers just to remind us that this is an issue that we should probably pay attention to, but usually like stories are better because it reminds us that people are real and then it kind of humbles us and reminds us that we're not saviors. Um, so anyways, uh, so that's the n current number that we're going with. The other thing is that 77% of traffickers are actually within their area still, like within their region, within in their country. So that's kind of one of the hugest misconceptions about human trafficking is that you must cross borders. In reality, that has nothing to do with it, even though sometimes it happens. But they finally got a stat on it, which is 77% of trafficking happens and traffickers don't actually ever go outside of their borders and they're still in the same place. So they got a stat on that. And so now we can actually like promote that a little more. Um, hi. Um, so the other thing is that the definitions also have changed because before in the trafficking in persons report and, you know, globally with human trafficking, they didn't actually have all the, you know, like things like modern slavery or there's a few other definitions and they're like, we should probably write these definitions down um, because they haven't actually been written down. So they're like, we're going to write these definitions down, which brings me to one of my other points um, is that this is a good one. I really like this one. So they decided to finally be like, hey guys, all our research shows that trauma informed care is so much better. I mean, that's kind of no surprise, but this has been one of the amazing things in the organization that um, I run, which is Blackout Trafficking. Um, we get to work with lots of survivors um, and that is amazing because they give us feedback and they're awesome and they've been through so much stuff. And so the, the care that they need, they actually tell us about. So that's kind of one of the hugest changes in 2019 is that these governmental organizations, including the U.S., are kind of like, oh, wait a minute, we should actually listen to um, survivors and see what they say. And this has kind of been progressing for a while, but now it's kind of like the thing. And so like all care is now trauma-informed, victim-centered training. Um, okay, that's not true, not all, but I mean... A lot of it, a lot more of it. So that's a really good thing that makes it a lot more effective to actually do something and change things about human trafficking. You guys getting bored yet? Um, <laughs> so number four is that, no, that was five. Okay, this is five. Okay, so um, the U.S. is a, a tier one, which means that they're actually doing something to combat trafficking, which is a good thing. Um, on the other hand, our our cases of trafficking that we have like officially reported in the United States went down this past year, but the convictions went up where people are actually being held accountable for the actions. So that's a good thing. Um, and it's, I mean, it's a minimal amount. I mean, ideally the cases would go up, but since so many trafficking victims are not um, recognized or are misidentified, that kind of is a problem. So number six, um, when it comes to back to global, from the U.S. back to global. Um, child soldiers, they're tr still trying to do stuff about that. I don't know if you guys remember like the whole invisible children thing like 10 years ago with 
Coney and and um, child soldiers is still a huge issue where they take kids and give them guns and essentially tell them to kill their parents and everybody else. And the girls are usually used as sex slaves. So it's pretty bad. Um, and that's uh, mostly in Africa, but it's also in a few other places like South America and in like Myanmar, like uh, Southeast Asia area. So, um, so essentially they're trying to still reduce that and the thing they decided to do this year is give them less, those countries less access to military equipment. I have no clue if that's effective or not. Um, personally, I tend to be on the side of, you know, help the people in the region and empower them to protect their kids. But, um, you know, from a governmental standpoint, that's kind of their new mode of operation. Okay, number seven. So, Number seven is that the funding for um, different care for human trafficking victims in the United States has gone up, which is good, um, and they're using different programs. On another side, it's gone down is that the immigration aspect of it, op um, options for people who are immigrants that are being trafficked into the United States, they're not, and a lot of trafficking victims are um, illegal immigrants as well because they have, they're vulnerable, um, or their family are, or family is, that would, the family is illegal. Um, so regardless, what's ended up happening is that one of the huge ways that we've, um, the United States has gone to protect trafficking victims or help them is that if they're, you know, we're trafficked into the United States and then they're here illegally, which is one of the main ways that traffickers keep them from getting help is saying, you're not allowed to be here. If you go to the police, you're going to get in trouble. So the U S has um, for many years has had a protection over them, which has kind of been like, there's these visas that are, they have access to so that that way, if they do come and get help, we can actually help them as opposed to not help them. So that has changed. And I don't know to what degree, but it has changed so that there's not as many, um, immigration opportunities for them and the help that they have been receiving the ones who have been here, um, and need help because they are not here legally for whatever variety of reason, their opportunities have gone down. So that is a negative. Um, still, the number of uh, the, the place where the victims are ID'd the most um, is the United States, Mexico, and the Philippines, which isn't so much about how many victims there are as it is about how, um, how well seen and reported they are. So that's a good thing because the United States is getting a lot better at that, which is largely to do with Polaris and their human trafficking hotline, which is an amazing resource. If you ever suspect something or you need help or you need guidance, getting connected with organizations, they're the people to call. Um, and so all, and when it comes to who's being identified, again, we still have the same vulnerable populations that hasn't actually changed, which are people that are on welfare, immigrants, um, people from the LB, gosh, I'm going to screw that up, community, um, homeless youth, um, and quite a few other vulnerable populations. Um, like with homeless youth, about with like one third of them, it's possible that they're being trafficked, which is a really high number. Um, so um, those are still the vulnerable populations for human trafficking. And here's another fact. So social media is the top way that traffickers are now um, putting out about their victims, or well, that's not what they're calling them, it, this specifically about sex trafficking um, in the United States. So that's kind of being used more and more. And there were things like Backpage and Craigslist, Craigslist shut it down. But now social media is kind of being the thing where they're soliciting ads. And that's been really interesting because that's changing all the time, especially on things like Instagram, because Instagram will shut something down but then they'll open something else up and then they'll use emojis, um, like a, a series of emojis to like contact people that they're trying to solicit to or um, advertise and sell to um, the usually the girls that are being um, sold. So that is kind of, um, it's now kind of up there even more. Um, Facebook is still really high up there. And so these are kind of the things that are going on when it comes to um, human trafficking. I think I said all 12. Did I say all 12? Oh, no, I didn't. Um, going back to the hotline, this is number 11. Um, hotlines are being used more and more in lots of countries now are opening their own hotlines because they're starting to realize that this is super effective. Um, so the United States has one and we also have that um, be free. You can text to them, um, which is really helpful. And so that's kind of been one of the things globally is that lots of countries are like, we need a hotline too. And so they've been kind of like working that out. And then it's also helpful because then we're getting actual facts on human trafficking. And number 12, um, they're also 
also still working on labor trafficking, which is one of the hugest types of human trafficking might not be the hugest in the United States, but it is the hugest overall in the world. And so, um, one of the things that they've been really trying to do is work with contractors and people who are hiring people and the labor, um, the international labor organization has finally made some laws that are like, wait a minute, we need to make a law about hiring people and the process of fair labor treatment. And this kind of has a lot to do with the cool people out there who are really like into like ethically sourced stuff and promoting it and teaching us about like conscious goods that are not made by, um, that have no ties to slavery whatsoever and are fairly traded. So, They've been paying attention to that this year um, from a global level, again, from, you know, the UN and people like that who push the trafficking in persons report. So it's super boring. Um, but if you're involved in the world of trafficking or if you care about it, it kind of becomes really helpful as we need to know about it to a degree so we can do something about it. Um, and if you're not really sure what to do about it, um, I run an organization called Blackout Trafficking. You can find us on Instagram, and we are uh, uh, we're based in San Diego, but we're actually an online organization because we help people, different communities, and um, like churches and social groups and book clubs. Like we had a knitting group do it this last year in Minnesota. We have people from all around the world who um, partner with us to do our project in March where we wear one black item during the month of March, whether it's a hat or a tie or a scarf or a shirt or a dress. And we wear that throughout the month of March to kind of limit our freedom a little bit with our choice of what to wear because it reminds us about the people whose freedom is great limited um, through being trafficked and so as we do that it kind of creates that habit every single day for people who pray they pray when they put it on for people who don't pray they just are like oh yeah trafficking is happening and as we do that we handhold people and kind of teach them how they can do basic advocacy work for human trafficking so we help people who don't like trafficking that don't know anything about it get from there to creating a 30-day habit through that 31 day I guess it's not 30 days, it's 31 days, March is, um, through that challenge that we go through throughout the month of March. And it, it's really cool because it definitely creates life change and people come out of it being like, I didn't, I actually feel like I can do something about human trafficking now. So if you want to check that out, you can, um, or if you know any partner organizations to work with, because that's what we do on the other side is we work with small nonprofits around the globe from India to Netherlands to, you know, where I am in San Diego. And we um, work with them and we raise funds for them, which is the hardest thing as a small nonprofit is to do the marketing and to do that difficult task of fundraising. Um, and they don't, a lot of times they don't have the bandwidth to do it. So we kind of come along alongside them for the month of March and are like, hey, we will help you out. We will, you know, if you want us to do, we'll do social media takeovers. We will give you all the content pre-laid. We will, we will be your people through the month of March and advocate for you. And that's really cool because then we get to connect with all these small organizations and really love on them well so that that way they can actually do what they need to do best locally wherever they are. And so if you know of any local organizations or are connected to any or just really like one and want them to be, um, you know, in our system so that they can become one of our partner organizations this coming year, please let us know because we really love coming alongside them and serving them. Um, and even though it's in March, it takes us all year to prepare for it. So letting us know about them sooner is always better. Or if you have a community that you think might be interested in doing blackout trafficking with us, let us know also and we'll get you equipped to do that. So that is it when it comes to um, World Day Against Human Trafficking and the 12 new facts about human trafficking from 2019. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, I'll talk with you later. Bye.